Welcome to the DeFi Standard, and this is Mickey B. Fresh. And today we're going to talk about the Flare Time Series Oracle and why this is the key component that's going to allow you to obtain massive amount of wealth in the future and why you can become like a miner in proof of work and one of those big validators in proof of stake at no risk to your tokens. And I also want to clear up some confusion in prior videos over the risk between staking and delegating your actual vote for the Flare Time Series Oracle. So before we get started on how you could obtain wealth and earning through the Flare Time Series Oracle, let's first just clarify the difference between Spark and proof of stake networks. Some proof of sta stake networks like Cardano, you're able to stake at no risk and keep that token in your private wallet. Yes, with Flare Network and Spark, you can delegate your vote at no risk. But there's one thing you can do in Flare that you cannot do in Cardano or any of these other networks with proof of stake. You're able to simultaneously use that spark token while you're delegating your vote at no risk so you're actually able to stake your spark token in the f asset system with an agent which would be like an exchange or a market maker or custodian and still be able to delegate your flare time series oracle vote to a signal provider that is something that you are not able to do in proof of stake and that's what makes this system that the flare network team has built so powerful and why it's going to change much of the crypto market and flip it on its head upside down because proof of stake uses value to secure the network and it's wasting that value just for security and with the flare network they use federated byzantine agreement with avalanche consensus on top so there's multiple unls connecting to other blockchains where these f assets come from so it's bootstrapping the decentralization so flare network out of the gate is going to be more decentralized than most of these networks that have been around for years and have become more centralized so let's move on here, we're going to listen to Hugo Filion, who is the CEO of Flare Limited, who is the creators of the Flare Network. And he's going to talk here. This was an interview with Brad Kimes and myself back in December. And that is Hugo on the left. But as importantly, or even perhaps more importantly, the actual beating heart of the Flare Network is in, in many ways the uh, Oracle system called the Flare Time Series Oracle. And, and this is uh, essentially a system that brings data from outside of the network onto the network. And it's a system that replaces mining or staking because we don't have mining or staking uh, on Flare, but it's the system that replaces that uh, on Flare. So that offers essentially um, a, a rewards process um, and, and you don't have to risk anything for that. Simply, your Spark has these kind of votes attached to it, which you delegate. So you can either provide a price directly to the, uh, uh, to the Flare Time Series Oracle, um, and, and that price is weighted by your number of votes, or you can delegate your votes to someone else who provides that price. Either way, there shouldn't be any risk to you, um, meaning that you're not, you know, you're not at risk from losing that money, uh, and you will potentially earn upside from the payouts of the Flare Time Series Oracle. Uh, just to go into a little more detail on that, uh, tips are structured such, to, such as to build the ecosystem as quickly and as decentralized manner as possible, such that the payouts are very much higher at the beginning than later on. And what that also should do, as, as we're doing a, a utility fork, and a lot of people will end up with the uh, Spark token, um, that, that maybe are only there to, to take it the value from it 
rather than to build the ecosystem, rather than to use it, rather than participate. So what that will do is it basically it, it moves the rewards away from those people that sell it at early days uh, to people that want to participate, to people that want to hold the token. Uh, and, you know, uh, Mickey, any questions there? Or So there it is. You heard it from Hugo once again. This system is designed to reward those who participate early at no risk to your tokens. So unlike proof of stake, where all you can do is delegate or stake your token, and now it's locked in your wallet. With Flare, you're going to be able to then utilize that Spark token by either staking it with agents for the F asset system and earn yield, and simultaneously be able to earn the daily Spark rewards. Now, this is a monumental difference in the design because, as you heard Hugo say, there is no staking for security and there's no mining for security. The staking that he's talking about earlier in this video has to do with putting up the collateral for the F assets to come over to the Flare network. Now we're going to hear another clip of him talking about this. Now, even these signal providers who we're going to be able to delegate our votes to at no risk to our token and then still be able to utilize those Spark tokens to earn yield in other ways. Say it's in the Probity Vault Bank. You're going to be able to put your Spark in there and still be able to delegate your vote. You're going to be able to either stake it with an agent to collect the rewards from the F assets that are minted and still delegate your vote to earn Spark every day or every other day. And now this is from December 21st uh, with OKCoin, OK the AMA. Something called the Oracle system. Uh, and what the Oracle system does is it's a way to get data from outside of the network onto the network. Uh, and that data is price data um, foremost, principally. I mean, it could be other forms of data, but price data makes the most sense certainly in, in the early days. Uh, and so the the networks such as ours, which was uh, federated by Zantan Agreement or XRP or Stella, uh, they don't have mining. Um, they don't have block rewards. They don't have mining. You know, it's not a it's not a com competitive system to to uh, to handle that. So it doesn't have rewards. So we've essentially replaced mining uh, with uh, an oracle system and the oracle system essentially asks everyone in the system please uh vote on either you provide your own data or you can delegate your vote to a data provider okay i'm going to stop it right there because i want to move on to what everyone has been asking about is how are the different ways that we could earn in the flare network and there's going to be many ways but we have to separate which tokens are going to be able to be earning different ways. Now, on the left-hand side here, we have the Spark token, also known as FLR. So to be able to earn, you're going to delegate a detachable vote to a signal provider. No risk here. No risk. And you will earn Spark tokens. Then you're also going to be able to simultaneously stake that Spark token with an agent in the F asset system as collateral to back these F assets that are minted on the Flare network. So now you're going to be able to simultaneously earn in two ways. This cannot be done on Cardano. This cannot be done on other networks. So this is something new. This is the native token of the Flare network. That's why this is so powerful. Now, when if you go to sell your Spark token and just because the price went up, you're going to lose out on earning these daily yield. So every day, you'll be earning Spark, and then you'll also be able to earn LTC, Doge, XLM, BTC, whatever the other F assets are that are minted. Now, that's a really powerful value proposition. Now, there'll be different ways to earn. So you could either do it yourself 
from a self-hosted wallet. And we've yet to see the full implementation of what Toho Labs is building on the integration side for Flare Network. They are currently going through a security audit as we speak right now, but it's almost done from what I hear. And then the code will be open sourced and we'll have a better idea of that. Now, moving on to the F assets. And for example, here is FXRP I used. You will earn daily airdrops. Now, I'm going to repeat that daily airdrops just for bringing your XRP onto the Flare network as FXRP. There's going to be these general rewards pools. Think of them like mini escrows that are going to pay you out Spark every day just because you brought over XRP or you brought over XLM or you brought over Doge or you brought over Litecoin. Now, yes, Litecoin has its own unique pool because it was second. We're not going to go into that. Once again, no risk. The only risk to this is trusting the protocol. The whole concept behind what Flare Networks is doing with these F assets is trustlessness. And that's the most important. It is more trustless than any wrapped protocol there is right now in the whole industry. Because with wrapped, you always have a counterparty. I don't care if it's a federated counterparty, a consortium like what uh, wrapped Bitcoin is. It's not truly trustless. This is truly trustless because not only is the originating XRP always available to be redeemed at any point, you could redeem your XRP. And then there's a fail safe for whatever reason, the XRP is not able to be redeemed there is two and a half times the value of that XRP in Spark backing it. So it's not a synthetic asset because the actual underlying XRP is still available on the XRP ledger plus the collateral. Very important to understand that. So there is no risk in minting FXRP. You are just trusting the protocol the same way that you trust the XRP ledger to hold XRP in your non-custodial wallet. It's the same thing. Now, you could also simultaneously, you also have a vote that comes with your F asset. Now, you don't earn anything from the network for that, but the signal provider can compensate you for that. They don't have to, but they can. It might be an NFT, it could be an XRP, it could be Spark, we don't know. You are going to have to pay a um, commission on the Spark side when you do delegate. But that's over here on the left. What's interesting about FXRP is, so you're going to earn these daily airdrops in Spark every day just for minting your FXRP. But you're also going to be able to use it in different dApps like Probity. For example, and that's what I described here in this diagram that was made over a month ago. Basically, it's not FUSD. So we can replace this with the RA stablecoin. So you deposit in this vault and you'll still be able to earn your Spark daily rewards. And I'm sure many of you are asking, well, how much Spark are we going to earn? H how do we know how much we're going to earn? Now, that's going to be dependent upon how much F assets are minted, so in dollar value. And that's what will determine that. Also, how much Spark is in the rewards pool. So there's going to be 5 billion donated, two billion, uh, 5 billion from the foundation. Then there's going to be 7 billion that was supposed to go to Ripple and the scam accounts that did not go to them. So that's 12 billion. Now, on top of that, you're going to have all the unclaimed spark. And I think there's roughly 10 to 15 billion unclaimed right now. So in this rewards pool or mini es escrow, I call it, there's going to probably be anywhere from 15 to 25 billion spark. And now a percentage of that is going to be released every day to F asset holders. 
So you could be earning interest in multiple ways. So you could have your FXRP in, say, the probity vault, earning daily spark, but also earning interest from the probity vault. Now, these are things that are unfathomable in traditional markets that you're going to be able to also do on the Flare Network. And now, any of these F assets, say if it's FXLM, FLTC, they're all going to be able to be brought over to the XRP Ledger's decentralized exchange and expect that to come over. Oh, I have a little spelling error here. I did not notice that. Oh, I just noticed that now. Sorry, the grammar error. There's going to also be an insurance protocol that's going to go along with this probity and trust line credit network. So those are going to all work together. And that's something really interesting that I'm looking forward to on top of the Flare Finance, which is being built right now and going through beta. There's some new information that was released by Hugo as well, that there's going to be a test net from the Flare network once the security audit's over and before it launches. So we'll be able to test out the Flare Time Series Oracle, the signal providers. There'll be a private beta and a public beta. So look out for those. And that's something that really excites me because us as users really want to get familiar with how these systems are going to work with our wallets. Now, it's going to be most likely you're going to be able to keep your private keys in a hardware wallet and then connect to a software wallet or a browser extension that will then allow you to interact with either the Flare Finance DAP or other aspects of the Flare network. So these new technologies allow us to keep our private keys on the hardware wallets, but still be able to interact with the actual networks. Now, one other thing I want to speculate on, and I know, and I didn't put this in the um, title, but I think it's something that I think we're all interested in. What's the price of Spark going to be when it comes out at launch? Is it going to be two cents? Is it going to be a dollar? And I don't know. You don't know. But what I do want to discuss in speculation is how is the market going to react to Spark? Now, in reality, there's only going to be probably between 5 and maybe 7 billion Spark that's actually able to be traded on exchanges. That's all at launch. So knowing that, that's what we know. Now, CoinMarketCap might put out there that there's 70 billion or 50 billion or 100 billion. Whatever they put out, it doesn't matter. We know that only 5 to 8 billion will really be able to be traded at launch because we're only getting 15% of that. I'm not going to go into all the details of why, but that's roughly what it's going to be. Now, we're going to get a bunch of people who are going to instantly just dump because they don't comprehend, they don't understand, or they don't care, or they're just intellectually lazy, and they just sell because they they just want the profits for some other altcoin or, some, or for fiat, whatever it is. But those smart money, like us, are going to realize that if we hold this, we're going to be able to compound our yield so high. In the beginning, it's going to be massive, and it's going to blow people's minds. And I could go as far as saying it's going to melt faces, because it will, because the system is designed to incentivize the participation of Spark owners and then of the minting of F assets. Now, in the first few days... After Spark launches, you're not going to be able to mint the F assets right away. The Spark asset needs to stabilize a little because it's going to be used as collateral. So there is going to be a slight, you know, a little delay until it stabilizes till the F assets. But it's going to be us, the community, who is going to govern everything once that happens. Once the F asset minting begins, there's nobody else. There's no Ripple. There's no Flare Limited. It's us, the community, and the and we are the foundation who manage the whole network. And I think that's important to note here. And we're going to see all types of applications being built from like the other day. If you saw my video, I'll put it at the end of um, this one. 
uh, on the Egyptian Middle East Africa trade tech platform with identity. And then also we have Proppy. Mm, looks like something's going on there. We don't know for sure. But we do know Flare Finance is for real and they're building a whole DeFi ecosystem. We know the Trustline Credit Network is building something massive with the whole credit network app, the Probity Vault, and then the insurance protocol as well. And we know that the XRP Ledger, the gateways concept, has never disappeared and is never gone. It's coming back. It's just going to be coming back in compliance. GateHub now offers Lloyd's underwritten insurance for $100,000 on their wallets. So we're going to start seeing more and more of that. And how this Trustline credit app actually works on top of the whole Flare network and the XRP ledger is really fascinating to me because we're going to need some kind of ILP wallet or open payments uh, system that's going to allow interoperability here between these other networks like Litecoin, XLM, Doge, XRP. There's going to be UNL validators, which means a unique node list, which is a group of validators that operate on both the Flare network and the other networks that will digest all the data coming into the Flare network. So there's no reason why we're not going to have one wallet that's going to be able to hold all these assets in native form and in F asset form. So be on the lookout for that. And this is the opportunity, like I was saying in yesterday's video, the Goldilocks zone. Whoever could take advantage of the next one to three years and come out with a compliant KYC AML solution to bring in enterprises, financial institutions, wealth tech, investment banks to build on top of these networks is going to be the ultimate winner. Just because Ethereum is out in front or Polkadot is having these auctions for new projects, the winners have not been established yet. And whoever is going to be regulatory compliant and allow for the decentralization and these new products to be built is going to be the real first winner. And what I think Ripple, Flare, Interledger, and RippleX are building here is all the, and PolySign and RippleNet are, and pay string, pay string is going to be really big, are all the components of this modular architecture that's going to come together to build a monster ecosystem that's going to comply with all the regulations, all the compliance that's needed for all these trillions of dollars in value to flow in. And with the private ledgers, which I didn't get to too much yesterday, I want to just touch on quickly that... David Swartz said there's going to be private walled gardens for them, but the walls are going to be easily be raised up and they're going to connect to the public networks. This is why I say retail is very important. David Swartz just proved what I've been validated, what I've been saying for the last few weeks here. The banks want walled garden systems. These are public, open, decentralized ledgers. The value needs to be shown of how these assets can be used in open, decentralized ways, not in closed wall gardens. There's no other XRP. There's one XRP. There's one price of XRP. That's all there is. So they need to prove the use cases on these public networks, like Flare, like the XRP ledger. And we're going to see supply chain. We're going to see DeFi. We're going to see payments. We're going to see web monetization. That's what's going to drive the value. And XRP's value will get driven higher by Flare because the more FXRP that's minted on the Flare network is going to pay yield out every day to those FXRP owners. So if XRP went from, say, $0.50 cents to $3.50, you know how you now have to make a decision. Do I want to sell that for that profit? If I do, I'm giving away my daily yield of earning Spark every day. And as Spark goes up in price, I'll be giving that up too as well. Because every Spark I, I earn in yield, 
I could earn more spark with that. So I think we all need to reconsider the uh, cash out plans or exit plans, people call them. I would reconsider everything with what Flair is coming out with because it changes the whole game with your XRP and capital appreciation is no longer the only game in town here. Now we have yield in a decentralized way. And we're going to have different ways to earn that yield. So we're going to be able to earn this spark, put it in a vault, mint stable coins, take those stable coins, then go loan those out and earn interest on that. While we're already earning interest on our FXRP in the vault and we're earning the daily spark rewards. So these are the kind of things that are going to compound wealth beyond your imagination. We've seen a little of it with Celsius and, and Nexo earning a little yield here and there but your mind's about to be blown once flare goes live because the gas fees are going to be so low the projects are going to be able to be built on them also by having the private unls they'll be able to be regulatory compliant if it was just say a consortium of this um supply chain uh group of say uh farmers or producers of manufacturers of electronics like in just that industry they could create their own unl so hugo's talked about that in the past and it's something i think we'll see on the flare network not just DeFi. yes DeFi is the first but we need identity we need name addressing and all of that to go along with it here so i hope this video helped everyone understand how to earn with the flare network and I know people have asked, well, can you do a step-by-step -step tutorial? It's hard to do a step-by-step -step tutorial when we don't have all the information yet of how the wallet works. One other thing I want to clear up, and I've see, heard this go around. I'm going to say it again. To mint FXRP, you do not, and I repeat, you do not need Spark to do that. You can't collateralize your own FXRP. That you do not do, and you can't do, they're totally separate. You take your XRP, you pay a fee, and now you get FXRP. Now, with your Spark, you could stake it with an agent to be used as collateral to earn those fees that people pay for minting FXRP and other F assets, while you could simultaneously delegate that vote to earn more Spark. And that's where the power is here. But I've seen a lot of people asking, well, do I have to put, can I put up my Spark as collateral to mint FXRP? You don't have to do that. There's, you don't need to put up your own Spark and others do that for you. You just pay a small fee and you get FXRP and that's it. So I just wanted to kill some of that FUD, you know, how that gets a little, it runs rampant quickly. So hopefully this diagram helps everyone, you know, pause the screen. You can look at it. It helps. This below here is just an early version of what the RA stablecoin, the probity vault, and the trust line will look like. All right. So I hope that helps everyone. Um, I want to also let everyone know I'm going to be on uh, Patty XRP and myself, Mickey B. Fresh, will be on Alpha Dog. Uh, live stream tonight with the doge community so we're trying to bring these communities together and as one on the flare network and this is the start of it and in the future we'll be reaching out to other communities as well the litecoin community the stellar community but we're starting with the doge community so please everyone in the xrp community please be supportive of these other communities that are going to be a part of the flare network with us. I'm Mickey B. Fresh, and I'm out.